February 25th, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. This is the Defendant Lobby, alright. But there's no Defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Ema for that matter? It almost seems as if... Something's been happening behind the scenes. Oh, it's Edgeworth. I didn't know who was talking. I didn't know what voice to use. That happens a lot. <laughs> uh, Edgeworth! Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 777777 ID number is, that is. Well... I have a pretty strong hunch. Yeah, it's him. <laughs> Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes, right? And Chief Prosecutor Scar will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. This is it the first time he's ever done something like this? Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to this SL9 incident. I almost said DL6. Don't be stupid, today's the last day of the trial. We didn't have time to reminisce about the past. Edgeworth, this is obviously the same as, your pre as the previous case that you two were in. Like, the same thing is happening, you have to go back to the, the incident. <laughs> it's the same thing as the DL6 incident, come on man. <laughs> oh my god. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. February 25th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number nine. Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally this is when the prosecution puts forward its opening statement. Hmm? But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant? Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, are you even back to the pool yet? N no, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is the propos this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say, the defendant has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request, and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21 of this year, 21st, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! You can't! Your Honor, 
The defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana... Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm... While the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation, the request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented, unprecedented situation. Unprecedented situation? One of those. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... Objection! One moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth? Prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you. But why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Hmm. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. But this sudden confession from the defendant obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, worthy. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh? To whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call... Ms. Ema Sky. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue- I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well, the court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Ms. Amos Guy, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Baby. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Ema. Ema Sky. My occupation... I am Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that, resolved, that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay then. He sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. I mean, we all saw this coming. Obviously, we're going to grab the S online incident. Two years ago. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, 
What does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense move against cross-examination. I can't remember what the contradictions are here, so we're going to start pressing. Uh, I'm sorry, Amos Sweetie. We need to ask you some questions. I'm sorry. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second in command under, under then Deputy Chief of Police, Gant. My sister. She was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Guy used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk. And dream about playing that organ. I wanted to play it that day too. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a... a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Skye and Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door to have a look. That's when I saw him. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Dark's questioning. Deputy Chief Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. I almost forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I, I thought I was as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in? I... I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out? Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, D Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. So you spoke to Detective Goodman about this two years ago? Yes. That's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Y yes, but at the time, the, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright? Have you heard enough? This picture the witness drew, I believe it has a very important meaning. Objection! The list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Y yes, Your Honor. Well, you mean no. Wait, wait, you don't mind. Okay, so the picture. This is a contradiction because we actually have that picture um, in our inventory here. If you scroll through and find this evidence list here, we can inspect it in 3D, we can flip it over and see that there's a drawing on the back. There we go. 
picture is drawn on the back of the evidence list in magic marker. I've got a very bad feeling about this. So yeah, we have the picture. So we're gonna present that and let Ema know that we do in fact have it. Mr. Edgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its existence? Huh? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over? Turn it... Ah! What's this? Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it! That's the picture I drew! Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? And then the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists, they're... they're different. They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order, order! But Miss Sky, why did you draw your picture on the back of your such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor. Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Yes, that's quite conceivable. Mr. Edgeworth? It's possible. Let's see. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that... that thing. That's that... that thing. That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper. Evidence list restored and updated in the court record. Very well. Witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Uh, oh, yes, sir, Your Honor. What's wrong with Ema? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. Hmm. Ema's picture. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see was shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. I think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Do Joe Dark about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Okay, I see a contradiction here. Uh, because... You see, the murder weapon was, uh, in this case, it was this thing, right? This knife here, which has a broken off tip. But if you look at the, uh, picture we've just constructed, you can see that the tip is all flattened off as though it's been broken off. 
before it's been used to stab anyone, which means it can't have been broken off yet. So the fact that it's got a flat tip on that sword there suggests that something strange is going on. That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. Well, let's object and see what we find. Um... Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. It, it does, but the music didn't stop, so I'm gonna get penalised. It does? I don't see anything contradictory. Huh? Really? Objection overruled. Try to think before you make accusations, Mr. Wright. Whoops. That didn't go so well. Okay, maybe we need to press first and then keep going from there. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course, this is the exact scene. It wasn't influenced in any way from your talk to the detectives? Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not. I better watch out, or he might find some way to cut my salary. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives, so I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh, well... That's strange. Okay, so I must use a different piece of evidence, because... Yeah... There is a problem with the picture. I'm sure I have the relevant evidence to contradict what I want to contradict here. Um, I need to express a bit more, give it more information. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. At first I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. And during that time the investigation team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge under the direction of Damon Gant and Linus Guy. Two or three days later, the memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? So at the time you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall to come to your rescue? No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright. And I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around, and that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Ema. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? You mean, you didn't see the actual murder take place? No, I'm sorry. Objection! Flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second, not only that. The trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyway, this picture. Uh, we already saw this, so I'll just speed through it a little bit. Okay, um... Yeah, I need to present some piece of evidence, but I'm not sure what. Uh, maybe I'll try the knife again now I've done some other stuff? No. <sighs> um, maybe the... this is the autopsy report, right? Okay, there we go. There we go. 
I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? It also contradicts the notes we had on the actual knife. Like, it said on the knife itself, this was found in the victim's, like, uh, whatever. The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closer to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken too. For our call, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Ema. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Ah! <laughs> What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right, but what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness me witness's memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time. But she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah! Order, order, order! Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark alone with Damon, along with Damon Gant. Should have been a comma there. Instead of a full stop, whatever. <sighs> During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's. Could there have been one? the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Ema really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife? If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder, there's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. Well, it turns out we do actually have another broken knife at the scene of the crime. 
The answer lies in the past, two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the awards ceremony. Ah! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the... the broken murder weapon. Notice the award prosecution, prosecutor marshal is holding. That's... a broken knife. As we, earlier, as we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order! 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 Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. Being, like, a normal, rational person. <laughs> this broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that... that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors' award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! But the Prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait! I... I remember now! I remember everything! A witness? Mr. Edgeworth! What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribble on the back? I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Sky? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. Ema's recollection. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed towards both of them. I think I... Uh, I think I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw... the Blue Badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. This is certainly most unusual. Objection! Try impossible. The Chief of Detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. Design him. Grammatical error. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defence may now begin its cross-examination. Stop! Please, don't pursue this any further! Lana. What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this, I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of this core of the matter. Ema's recollection. Are you sure about this? Of course. See? I even drew a picture of him here. 
but it was the chief detectives who thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. This boy badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh brother. Just when you thought that thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? His shadow. So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have been possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation? If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. What was it Ema saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger really? The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Ema drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger lookalike. Okay, so we have another object in our inventory here, which has three pointy bits on it, uh, which is this jar here. As you can see, it's got two there. There would have been another one over here, but it's been broken off, so three. So yeah, it's this thing. The mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the Blue Badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Oh, that's different. On the DS version, it actually plays that animation of loot of the Blue Badger on one screen while you move this around on the other one. Uh, I believe the correct angle is something like this. Maybe. Oh, I have. I usually take a while to figure this one out, just because the angle is weird. There, I think. This isn't right. I'm gonna make it look more like the badger. Okay, I got it wrong. It doesn't punish you when you get this one wrong, fortunately. I need to remind the defense its case hinges on the witness's drawing. If Mr. Wright can't match the shape the witness drew, we cannot accept his claim. I've got to find just the right angle. Maybe if I should rotate it vertically a bit more? Or horizontally? Come on, Mr. Wright, you can do it! I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Maybe... No, no, I'm pretty sure that goes to the back. Like this. There we go. Well, is this a miracle or what? No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. No, it can't be. Order, order. The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. Indeed. Very well then. 
Please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Skye's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Skye's office? Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through all the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have had to have been... The impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall? Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked into the direct in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Ah! ah! A suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No. Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless. I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright, but what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man in the sky knocked away was actually prosecuted Neil Marshall. You know, the fact that her drawing contains both the blue badger jar and the silhouette of the two men suggests that she hadn't knocked them away when the jar was in the air. Like, because those two things had to have happened simultaneously. Since there was one flash of lightning that lit up the whole room. This won't be addressed again, I'm just bringing it up because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Mr. Marshall died because of me? No. I never imagined a testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. Is it? I mean, doesn't that like happen in every single case? The witness takes the victim's life and you prove it with their testimony? What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky, but given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Ema? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. 
the reason you moved prosecu Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Ema did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Uh, evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. Sure you can. You know a spirit medium. <laughs> this has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Get some of the channel the dead people. Hmm. Touche, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one manner or another. That's that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name the victim may, look, may have left behind. Okay, okay. The real murderer's name is not what is on this piece of evidence, because I already know what's happening, but... I guess I have to go with what the case is telling me, even though I already know the truth. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Skye. Our purpose is not to accuse Ema of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth no matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright, please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. It's, uh, this jar, actually. Remember, it's got these, uh, these blood marks on it? That is a message from the deceased. Sort of. This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, it's gonna just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten that this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. Looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there's a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left in to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away, but blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. No. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written, given the circumstances. His murderer's name. Okay, so this was better with the touch screen, really, on the DS, since it's... Yeah, you, you press A to start drawing the line, and then, yeah. So yeah, you can see what we're spelling out here. Yeah. <sighs> it's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. 
Ema. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Ema Sky. See, Worthy? Can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in that case, were you not? Ack! Edgeworth is Kathy. Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. He's not an innocent man. He is a serial murderer. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How could he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, 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 order! The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. To be continued. That's it for this video. Again, I don't know why people are saying Joe Dark is an innocent man because he was a serial killer. And that's like, fact. So, I, I'm confused. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, next time, we're gonna wrap up this case. We're finally gonna discover the truth behind the SL9 incident. Once and for all. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Bye!